So I'm going to paint you a vision of the future tonight. So I want you to take a deep breath, relax, sit back, and close your eyes. Think about Times Square, New York City, 1900. The hustle of the people on the sidewalks. A boy hollers out from the stand, get your newspaper here. Horses clatter as they pull carts through the streets. No radio, no TV, no cell phones, no internet. Life seemed much simpler. You can open your eyes now. But in 1900, New York City had huge issues to solve. Just in the past decade, the population grew 33% to a staggering 3.4 million people. Lack of affordable housing, drinking water, food distribution, and proper medical facilities were all issues at the time. One of the larger issues was related to transportation. So in 1900, the city commissioned a study to get an idea of how big this problem was going to be. The study stated that by 1920, New York City was going to deal with three times the amount of horse manure than what was currently being produced. You heard right, horse manure. <laughs> New Yorkers wanted their city clean. Proper disposal was important for the health and well-being of the city. Of course, it also had economic impacts. Uh, for example, fine dining establishments located along many of the well-traveled districts didn't want to compete with the harsh odor. So the city started to prepare for it. The study stated what happened. Of course, the study didn't include the impact of an emerging technology, the horseless carriage. So as the city goes along and spends a significant amount of money preparing for the disposal of more horse manure, the reality is that the number of horses being used for transportation go down each year. Of course, by the 1920s, horses being used for transportation in New York City are relatively obscure. New technology has taken the place of the horse. The money spent on the study and getting proper infrastructure ready to handle the issue wasted. A significant disruption has taken place. 1900, a buggy whip company and stagecoach wheel company had the best year they've ever had. Sales and profits at an all-time high. They were thinking that obviously the horseless carriage was just another fad and our company will continue to prosper. When 1920 finally arrives, the age of the automobile is in full swing. The buggy whip company out of business. So we may not live in an era from which we are moving into the age of the horseless carriage, but we are about to enter the age of the Jetsons. Robots are already cleaning our floors, making many of the products in factories, greeting customers in shopping malls and banks. Robots will help with security, health care, elderly care. Robots will soon be washing your clothes, cooking your food, and cleaning your windows. Vehicles are getting closer to driving themselves. Autonomous or self-driving vehicles will be available to the general public in less than 10 years. In fact, PAVs, personal air vehicles, or simply the flying car, will soon be available for us to purchase. UAVs, more commonly known as drones, will go, soon go get our pizza. They'll mail, get our mail and our prescriptions. Drones will also keep us safe by surveilling our businesses and our homes. Food production will increase as drones keep an eye on the world's production. 3D printers will print replacement parts for your washing machine, as well as new products that you need in your home. 3D printers will also create body parts, like hip and knee replacements, organs, and even your skin. These printers will create our roads, our office buildings, and homes, just like the one you see already printed in this image. So what does this all mean for humanity's future? And more importantly, what does it mean for your future? Well, if you're comfortable with your current job or what you're doing or what you're studying for, 
the way you play, and maybe even how you interact with your family, you're about to get very uncomfortable. In a widely noted study published in, 19, or in 2013, Carl Fry, Michael Osborne, examined 702 occupations and found that 47% of workers in America had jobs at high risk of potential automation. In particular, they warned that most workers in transport, logistics, office support, sales cashiers, clerks, telemarkers, and accountants will simply disappear. Additional developments in technology, including advances in 3D printing and robotics since 2013, will displace many in the medical professions, restaurants, retail, attorneys, software developers, and many more jobs that require physical labor. In essence, almost everybody in this room is going to be impacted by these changes. So are you uncomfortable yet? Obviously you are. The ability to use the talents that you have developed to make a living are going to be replaced by artificial intelligence or a robot. Talk about feeling unneeded. In fact, I could just get depressed talking about this right now. But while we look at the future, one only has to look at the past to gain perspective. The horse manure issue in New York in 1900 is not unique. Right now, many cities and states in the country are looking 20 to 50 years in the future, planning on infrastructure needs. Many of these studies will state that this city needs to put a new road over here or to add more lanes over there. Of course, these studies are flawed because they're not based on, or they're based on current technology. Most experts agree that self-driving cars will reduce accidents by 90%. This means less traffic jams and more efficient use of our roadways. Then you factor in that more people will work from home because of advances in technology. Drones taking care of everyday tasks, like going to get your pizza, picking up bread from the market, bringing us prescriptions, uh, and uh, picking up food from our favorite restaurants, will further diminish the amount of time people will spend driving. So this sounds like our roads are going to be used a lot less 20 years from now than more. So why should we spend these massive amounts of money on infrastructure when the future is totally different than what we're looking at today. Technology disruption surrounds us. At no other time in history has this been more prevalent. Significant disruptions in transportation, manufacturing, accounting, food gathering and preparation, construction, and other industries are just starting to unfold. I, on the other hand, am extremely optimistic about the opportunities that I don't even know about yet. You see, in the past, technology has always ended up creating more jobs than it destroys. That is because of the way automation works in practice, uh, explains David Otter from MIT. And I'm just going to read this because this is so important. Automating a particular task so that it can be done more quickly or cheaply increases the demand for human workers to do other tasks around it that have not been automated. I'm going to say that again. Yes, that's right, thank you. Automating a particular task so that it can be done more quickly or cheaply increases the demand for human workers for other tasks around it that have not been automated. Oh, excuse me. Yes, dear. Yeah, okay, I'll go get that sub from Central. Uh, from, yep, yep. I'm kind of in the middle of something right now. All right, I know, I'm always in the middle of something, yes. All right, anyway, so <laughs> I just wanted to show you the phone. Okay, so let's take a look at the cell phone. The world's first mobile phone call was made on April 3rd, 1973, when Martin Cooper and senior engineer at Motorola called his rival competitor, telecommunications company, to inform them he was speaking to them via a mobile phone. I love that story, right? So the phone Cooper used, if you can call it that, weighed a staggering two and a half pounds. Imagine holding that up for a while. 30 minutes of talk time, and took 10 hours to charge. So then we fast forward a little bit. 1983, the first mobile phones went on sale in the United States, $4,000. Since then, over 250 million Nokia 1100 devices, one of the very first mobile phones that were affordable, were sold, 250 million, making that the best-selling electrical gadget in history. More people in the world have these cell phones than toilets. Think about that. 
The technology behind smartphones relies on up to 250,000 patents. And the average person unlocks his or, her own, his or her smartphone an average of 110 times a day. As of June 2016, 2.2 million apps are available in the Android store. Apple is just over 2 million. Apps such as Uber and Lyft put many people to work. Products such as Bluetooth headsets, phone cases, those companies thrive. So a simple phone call in 1973 started all of this, one phone call. So this technology has spun off more industries and has enhanced many others. Obviously, many people in traditional telephony have been disrupted. So if you have landlines, those type of things, those people are going out of business, of course. But however, the jobs created are absolutely staggering. This is just one of the reasons I'm so excited for what is about to happen. So many opportunities will be available for you and I. For many of us, our favorite hobby will become a job in the future. Another thing that's exciting is the ability to use time more effectively. Have a video conversation with your parents in your self-driving flying car as it transports you to work. Spend time with your kids as your drone goes to pick up dinner and your family robot keeps your house clean, washes your clothes, and packs you a lunch for work. There was another company involved in the transportation business in 1900. This company manufactured roller bearings for stagecoaches. Someone in the company realized that this product could be used for all moving vehicles, so they adapted. The Timkin Company is now one of the largest producers of roller bearings in the world today. So accept the fact that your life is going to be disrupted by technology. Be prepared for the fact that your job may be replaced by automation. But know that better opportunities will present, present themselves. So did I mention I'm excited for the future? You should be too. As Tim Buck Three stated in their song, the future's so bright, you gotta wear shades. Thanks everybody.